Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone, welcome back to developing soft skills and personality course. This is from IIT Kanpur using NPTEL and MOOC uh, mode. We are in the final module of week number 6 and this is the last lecture of this module that is lecture number 36. We started with communication skills in general for this entire week and towards the conclusion starting with the previous lecture. I started checking your existing knowledge about nonverbal communication by giving you pre-thinking assessment activity. We did the first one in the previous lecture and we will do the next one in this. But what did you learn from the first one? Let us take a quick look at what you learned from the first one. I tried to give you a test in the form of true or false just to check your uh, nonverbal communication. And that was the first three uh, pre-thinking assessment used to check your existing knowledge about body language and to clear certain misconceptions about nonverbal communication. So I mix the true or false statements, but for uh, just a quick uh, review of what I did, let us look at the true statements first and then look at the false statements. In the pre-thinking assessment, there were 11 true statements and 4 false statements. For your convenience, I have put all 11 statements under true first and then false statements, 4 of them under false. So let us look at them very quickly. The true statements were 1. Women have natural sensitivity towards body language than men. 2. A dishonest person avoids eye contact. 3. The more space a person occupies, the more power he enjoys. 4. One shows strides of aggressiveness while sitting with his legs on a desk with his hands clasped behind his head, especially before someone. 5. Crossing the hands, legs or the ankles is a defensive gesture. 6. Steepling with the fingers and hands show confidence. 7. Smoking a cigarette, especially before an interview or such activity is considered sign of anxiety or nervousness. 8. Showing your thumbs up indicates a successfully completed job or victory. 9. Babies are more sensitive to body language than adults. 10. Involuntary body language reveals a person's inner thinking or feelings. 11. People maintain their appointments and meet deadlines according to their perceptions of time. Now, the false statements which were 4 in number. The first one, sitting lower than the other person with whom you are interacting indicates dominance or authority is false. Second, resting your hand in the palm of your hand indicates interest in the subject is also false because it indicates boredom. Third one, nonverbal communication is less intense and impactful than verbal communication. No, it is more intense. Four, when we stop talking to somebody verbally, we stop the entire communication itself wrong because we start communicating non-verbally the moment we stop verbally. In fact, we are all the time communicating verbally as well as non-verbally. Let us go to the second pre-thinking assessment in this uh, lecture and the objective is the same as the previous one. It is just to check your existing knowledge about body language and to clear certain misconceptions about non-verbal communication. Again, a very simple true or false mode. Take your notebook or a piece of paper, take your pen or pencil, whatever you prefer and then uh, you just have to write down this time about 10 questions and say true or false. Again, I will repeat the questions and that is the time you have got. As I said, avoid pausing it, going back and then re-listening. Listen to it carefully, I am going to repeat it and use the time to write true or false. It is important you respond spontaneously so that you can really assess what is your actual inherent knowledge in your mind and if it is wrong then you can undo it. 
Okay. So, do not uh, think so much, act very spontaneously. The first one say true or false, silence can be used as a powerful means of dominance. The question is like can we really use silence as a powerful means of dominance. So, say true or false. Let me go to the next one, second one. Nonverbal communication can contradict verbal meaning. Nonverbal communication that is our body language can contradict verbal meaning, which means you say something, but then can your body language mean something else by the way it behaves, by the way it acts. So, that is question number 2, nonverbal communication can contradict verbal meaning. I hope you have given the answer, I am going to the next one. Question number 3, nonverbal communication can be used as a substitute for verbal communication. Nonverbal communication can be used as a substitute for verbal communication. This means instead of using words, can you use nonverbal communication? Okay. So, think about it, say true or false. I am going to the next one. Some nonverbal signs are universal and commonly acceptable. Some nonverbal signs are universal and commonly acceptable. Fifth one, gestures which indicate similar verbal meaning can differ nonverbally according to their cultural backgrounds. So, gestures, okay, whatever you do using your hand and part of your body. In verbal communication, it may mean the same thing, but it can differ non-verbally according to their cultural backgrounds. That is the statement, say true or false. Let me go to the next one, sixth one. The face is the most powerful channel of non-verbal communication. So, we have lots of channels, face, hands, our entire body, our uh, uh, leg, feet, even the fingers, okay. even our posture, okay, the way we sit. But overall it is said that the face is the most powerful channel of nonverbal communication. Say true or false, okay. let me go to the next one. Seventh one, we move away from persons we dislike. It means we maintain distance we try to move away from persons we dislike in terms of body language. Say true or false. Next one, negative nonverbal signals are more noticeable than positive ones. So, positive ones like happiness, negative ones like depression. Negative nonverbal signals are more noticeable than the positive ones, just say true or false. Ninth one, awareness of your body language can help you control it. So, it simply means knowing your body language can help you control it, say true or false. And the last one, tenth one. It is difficult to fake body language for a long period of time. So, fake is to cheat. Okay. Sometimes you can use your body language to hide certain things. So, the question is asking or it says it is difficult to fake body language for a long period of time. Okay. Let me go to the answers. Now, be ready to give one mark each for the correct answers and zero for the wrong ones. The first one answer is true, silence can be used as a powerful means of dominance. Yes, between intimate relationships, between boss and the worker, when one of the persons stops talking, avoids interacting. 
So, silence can be used as a powerful means of dominance. The other person, if he or she cares about the relationship, submits, becomes submissive, yields to whatever demands given by the other person. So, this is interesting, right? You do not have to always shout, yell at the other person, talk all the time to control, but you can use silence very effectively to control the other person, especially in terms of relationships, contacts, in terms of human communication. The second one is also true, non-verbal communication can contradict verbal meaning. So, it simply means your body language can contradict what you tell someone. So, you say, I am not interested, but your eyes are showing that you are really interested. So, that is what it means. The third one, non-verbal communication can be used as a substitute for verbal communication. The answer is true, okay, as it is given in the picture itself. You can say, silence please or you can simply put your finger on the mouth indicating do not talk. You can say stop this nonsense or you can very powerfully just show your hand and tell the person just stop it, I do not like it. Fourth one is also true, <coughs> some nonverbal signs are universal and commonly acceptable. Yes, in fact, most of the nonverbal signs are universal and commonly exciting for example, happiness for example. We are going to look at some basic expressions, nonverbal signs which are universally acceptable, but this uh, face that indicates happiness and the face that indicates sorrow, so there is no two opinions on that, so it is universally acceptable. The next one, gestures which indicate similar verbal meaning can differ non-verbally according to their cultural backgrounds. Showing V sign for example, it can verbally mean one thing, but culturally it can mean different things when you show the uh, V in different backgrounds. So, one has to be careful. Okay. So, this again we will look at with more examples. The sixth one, the face is the most powerful channel of nonverbal communication. The answer is true because if you observe only the face, the eyes, the way the face looks, okay, the smile or lack of smile, the seriousness or lack of seriousness, everything can be seen from the face itself. So, you can easily gauge the person's interest by looking at the facial expressions. The seventh answer is also true, we move away from persons we dislike, yes, and we graviate, move towards the persons we like. So, I have put the picture where these two small boys, they like each other, they want to be close, okay, they put hand on each other, but when you do not like someone, you try to maintain distance, you do not want to go close. Eighth one. Negative nonverbal signals are more noticeable than positive ones. Obviously, yes, unless you are very expert in concealing, when you are sad, close people will notice it immediately. Okay. So, you can even hide your happiness little bit, okay. but uh, this uh, sadness, depression, that you are unhappy, you are angry, you are frustrated. So, those things will be seen by your posture, by the way you talk, by the way you uh, respond to people. Ninth one is also true, awareness of your body language can help you control it. It is a very important one as far as our course is concerned and our uh, lesson is concerned because if you know your body language, the knowledge about what your body can do in terms of communication, how you can use your body, how you can use nonverbal communication very effectively. It will help you control it both uh, to help you communicate properly as well as to avoid some of the limitations that the involuntary body language will 
cause in you. Okay. So, it is true awareness will actually help you to control it. And the last one, tenth one, it is difficult to fake body language for a long period of time, yes. So, if you are happy, you can hide and show that you are sad for some time and vice versa, if you are sad, you can hide it for some time, but in times it will be seen by people. You cannot fake, you cannot hide it for a long period of time. So, it is very difficult to fake body language for a long period of time. Let us go to your score analysis. I hope this time you have done better. There were only 10 questions and uh, all of them were true. 9 out of 10, if you have got, you are outstanding in terms of nonverbal communication, you are already an expert. 8 to 9 is very good, it is in the excellent category. 6 to 7 is good, okay. but 6 to 5 is average or slightly above average if you are touching 6, 3 to 4 is below average and 0 to 2 is poor. As I was telling you, if you are going below 6, you definitely need to improve a lot. If you are in good, very good category, you can enhance. If you are outstanding, just keep checking where you are lacking in something, where you need more skills to develop, but you are already have you have developed something in terms of nonverbal skills or you are a good observer already, hone this skill and that is the one that is going to help you in terms of developing soft skills and your personality. Now, before I conclude, I want to continue with something I uh, talked about two lectures before about the barriers in communication. Now, one aspect of body language which we will talk about later, but it is just uh, uh, sort of relevant to what we have done today is accessories. Now, think about this question, I am not giving you any marks, but can accessories that is the clothing, the dress you wear, the perfume you have, the grooming, the way you dress, the watch you wear, the bracelet, earrings, nose ring, necklace the makeup you put or the makeup you do not put, dyeing of hair, the color you use for dyeing or not dyeing, moustache type, having moustache, not having it and having different kind of moustache, hair style type, belt, handbag, footwear, so wearing shoes or slippers, high heels. Now, all these are accessories which also contribute to our body language and they are symbolically trying to convey something, but can they act as a physical or psychological barrier? Do accessories enhance the effectiveness of communication or act as barriers? So, what is your answer? Do accessories enhance the effectiveness of communication or act as barriers? The answer is depends on what accessories you use, how appropriately you use and in which context you use and to whom you use and what kind of meaning you want to convey through the accessories. I will give you some examples and it becomes much clear to you. Take for example, high heels. Okay. Now, high heels actually help maintaining eye contact for the females, the women, especially if they have less height. So, if they want to look up, look straight eye to eye to the men who are taller. So, this gives a kind of feeling that they are on par, they are equal and they do not have to look up to the male bosses. Okay. So, that gives them some security. But if somebody is wearing a diamond studded high heels, it will be a distractor or any kind of high heels that will just glare the eyes of other people. Instead of looking at the person into the eyes, responding to the facial expressions, if they keep looking at the high heels that is worn, so that is really a distractor and it is going to be a kind of barrier both physical as well as psychological. Same way, 
the accessory barrier can have in terms of any inappropriate accessory that is used in inappropriate situations. Clothing for example, do you wear a costly or a cheap clothing? So, that depends on the context. In an interview for example, so you are expected to go with a decent clean one, but then if you go with this very costly jackets okay, and then the brand is uh, known some leather jacket where, where even when it is not cold okay, and then branded just to flaunt the brand, sometimes over dressing and sometimes dressing skimpily okay, revealing where it is not required. So, the simple example is you have to go to the swimming pool in a bikini, but you cannot go to the interview or for a presentation in a bikini. So, you obviously you are distracting their attention towards non-academic things which is unwarranted. Body perfume, again you can use it, but if you use it and then it creates a very staunch smell and then people like it, some people get allergic to it. So, people do not like you at all, when you enter they want just psychologically thinking that oh I do not like this perfume and they want to throw you out. The other thing can happen in terms of gender inappropriateness of using a body perfume. So, there was an interview scenario where uh, they before the uh, person could enter rose perfume came inside and then everybody like they were busy looking at the papers and then the perfume attracted and then they thought a very uh, beautiful girl is going to come and she is wearing this perfume. And then came this boy okay, not that good looking, but then he has put this rose perfume for what reason only he might be knowing psychologically the people prepared for something, they were disappointed when they saw this guy and then the expectation and disappointment caused in their mind acted as a barrier. So, from the beginning they tried to look at him with some prejudice and obviously they did not select him although he was a very good candidate. So, perfume can go against you if you do not know how to use it appropriately. Same thing go, can go with watch. watch should be functional, but if you wear a diamond studded one and then everybody's eyes are reverted to the watch. So, again you lose your chance of communicating to them effectively, persuading them to do something in your favor. So, you are diverting their attention and causing a barrier. Same thing with uh, the rings that you will put in your ear, in your finger, bracelets and even necklace. Okay. It should be simple. The best thing is to minimize the ornamentation as much as possible in formal occasions and use the appropriate ones and never to use that as a kind of distractor and cause that as a barrier physically as well as psychologically. Look at some more interesting examples in terms of makeup okay, or dyeing of hair. Okay. Look at the one that I have put in the middle. So, one can dye the hair in such a manner that even it looks like a chameleon or some animal with different colors. And then moustache type, so if you have, if you are fond of growing it so big, but you should also know the appropriateness like in formal occasion when you are being assessed for something as again in an interview situation, would they like you to go with this. And same thing with hairstyle, you can say that it looks punky, it looks cool, it looks stylish for you and your peer group of people, not the formal people who are sitting in the interview and assessing you and they are willing to give you a job. Now, this will act as a deterrent. So, keep this in mind. So, I just wanted you to give you a concluding thought that use accessories appropriately, inappropriate use can lead you into trouble and will act as a barrier and it is not worth doing it. But having said this, accessories today have become part and parcel of us. Just like your mobile, all other accessories also try to tell something about you, they 
add to your personality sometimes it looks like it's accessory that gives you your personality also look at two quotes from the same author one uh, uh, christian lobo team he talks about particularly shoes okay and with this two thoughts i'm going to conclude this lecture a shoe is not only a design a shoe is not only a design but it's a part of your body language the way you walk but it's a part of your body language the way you walk the way you are going to move is quite dictated by your shoes so the way you are going to move is quite dictated by your shoes it's the shoes often makes you walk erect make you not walk in an erect manner it gives personality it reduces your personality so you have to be careful in the ones that you choose and look at how it's appropriate for a woman using heel if she is using it properly when a woman puts on a heel that is slightly high heel to rise her height she has a different posture so the the look itself is enhanced by the posture a different attitude she really stands up and has a consciousness of her body she really stands up and has a consciousness of her body now the conclusion is that having a consciousness of our body in a favorable manner not having a consciousness that kills our actual spontaneous movement will help us to promote our own personality and develop soft skills to influence people and uh, enjoy success in our personal life with this note i conclude this lecture thank you for watching this video have a nice day